Hey there, ACCA rock stars. Steve Willis here. In this video, I'm going to help you get a pass on your upcoming financial management exam. We're going to do a deep dive into the topic that is project specific cost of equity, a tricky topic. I'll share with you all the exam technique that you need so you can pass your upcoming exam. Let's get started. Team, I'm going to take you through part A1 of question Z more. You can find this question in the ACCA practice platform. Go in there, find the March, June, 2021 FM exam. Assign that exam to yourself. Now, before you continue watching the video to get the most out of it, try it on your own. When you're done, come back and continue watching. Welcome back guys. We're doing part A1 together and right off the bat, the requirement says using the capital asset pricing model right here, calculate Zedmore's current cost of equity. So we got to do that first and then we've got to tweak it and turn it into the project specific cost of equity suitable for the new venture. Now that we know what we're looking for, Let's get rocking. Let's set up our spreadsheet. First thing I'll do, I'll label my work so the marketing team can easily follow along with what I'm doing, make it easy for them to give you the marks. And I'm going after a cost of equity with that cap M formula. I'm going to take a moment. I'm just going to write the formula down in a cell so I know what variables I need to track down in the scenario. So I remember that that cost of equity will be equal to the risk free rate plus the equity beta BE that's the beta from the stock market you can get that online and that will be multiplied by the market return the return of the market minus the risk free rate so there we go and Let's just do the work. Cap M or the cost of equity for company Z. Now that I know what I'm looking for, let me plug that into a formula. So I open the equal sign and I grab that risk free rate, which is 0 0.04. I add to that the equity beta of Z. 2.3 multiplied by the market rate, the return of the market, 0 0.10 minus 0 0.04. Double checking everything before I hit return. And looks good to me. And we get 17.8. Let me set that at two percentage with one decimal place. There's no mark for that, but I like it to look nice and pretty. There we have it. The cost of equity for company Z more. Let's get rocking now on that project specific cost of equity. And to do that, I'm going to grab the asset beta formula out of the formula sheet. Now you're not getting a mark for this. You're not losing a mark for this. I want to write it down. So I know what I'm looking for. And that will be the equity over the equity plus the debt multiplied by one minus the tax rate. So we get the tax shield there. So that's the asset beta formula. And I'm going to need then the market values of equity and debt for Zedmore and their proxy company. So let's get doing that. We've got Zedmore. And we can get their equity, market value of equity, market value of debt. I can copy this down. Rename this Winston. We've got the, the proxy company here, Winston.
And we can just check out the little scenario here on the left side of the screen and we have a balance sheet for Zedmore. And we see that they've got a book value of the equity, 40 million, 0.5 per share nominal value. So we know the number of shares would be 40 divided by 0.5 times the current share price of 105. So that's going to be equal to 40 divided by 0.5 multiplied by 1.05. We got an 84. Now look at the balance sheet again. We got two things here. We've got loan notes, we've got the bank loan. So we got two elements of debt. Now, the loan note is easy. That is not tradable. So we just use the book value for the market value. So that's gonna be 20. That's the loan note, sorry, the, the bank loan. Plus, what do we know about this irredeemable these irredeemable loan notes well we know that they're trading at 65 dollars per block of 100 so let me use a bracket there and that's going to be 250 multiplied by 65 over 100 and we get the debt 182.5 let's now go to winston and we see that they have 100 million of ordinary shares and trading at 260 per share. 2.6 nominal value, the, the nominal value is $1. So there's no adjustment needed there. And the market value of the debt. Well, let's check that out. They've got 110 million of loan notes trading at $96 per block of 100. So 96 over 100 and team there we have it the equity and the debt of Zedmore and the proxy guys we're getting close so you remember the steps that we have to take now first thing we've got to do is de-gear the proxy and that's a big formula there I might break it into just two chunks just so I don't make any mistakes. I'll do equity one line, then I'll do equity plus debt times the tax shield. Okay, and then I can get the beta asset of Winston. And I see that I have a little glitch in my formula up here. We forgot to multiply all of this by beta equity, right? Multiply. That is now fixed. Okay, we come down here, back to here. So we know the equity of Winston is this. So this denominator will be equal to the equity, 260 plus, let's open up a bracket to preserve the order of operations, the debt multiplied by one minus 0 0.2. Two brackets there, very carefully looking at that, looks good to me. So the beta asset of Winston will be equal to the beta equity of Winston, which they tell us is 1.25 multiplied by the numerator over the denominator. And we get 0 0.943. Guys, if you are a risk seeker, you could have just plugged all of those numbers right into that equation and you would have arrived at the same, at the same figure. I am risk averse here, so I am just taking a little more time going step by step and because I've got a spreadsheet, I'm actually saving so much time. I think it pays marks in the end just to go slowly, carefully, label what you're doing in a step-by-step -step fashion. So we've de-geared the proxy. 
Now we need to re-gear the proxy to Z's gearing. And once again, this time we just flip that formula over. The numerator is that, the denominator is that. And the equity of Z more is 84. The, denom the, the numerator this time will be equal to the equity, the 84, plus, open a bracket, the debt multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.2. Two brackets, there we go, 230. And now we come down here and we can get the And we can get the project adjusted equity beta now for Zedmore, and that will be equal to the beta asset of Winston multiplied by the numerator over the denominator. We get 2.58. So team, we are so close to being finished. Last thing that we need to do now is to park that back into cap M. So let's just grab this. Control, copy, control, paste, cap M. This is the project specific cost of equity. 4z. Double click on this column separator, open that up, and all we have to do is change out that 2.3 to the figure we just calculated there, that would be b23. I'll just type it right in there. b23. And we get 19.5, the correct answer. Team, tricky topic. There you have it, the spreadsheet exam technique for your FM exam. Remember, go carefully, go slowly, lay out what you're going to do step by step, make it easy for the marking team to follow what you are doing so they can award the own figure rule where appropriate. Guys, you could get into formatting, underlying, underlining, making it look super pretty, but there are no marks for formatting or coloring things. That's what I would do in the exam exactly like that. Guys, I hope you found that helpful. This is Steve signing out. Good luck on your upcoming FM exam.